This is the High School Crossfire. Welcome back. Uh, good morning, dear judges. My name is Isunzo John Mary from uh, Team Government, Makwal. Dear judge, in the debate, the development of renewable energy sources should take precedence over expanding oil and gas infrastructure. Now, dear judge, uh, team opposition comes and declares this as a value debate. This is not a value motion. Why? We have showed you that in the current status quo, there is balanced development of the oil and gas, or developing oil and gas infrastructure, and also developing renewable energy sources. In this, we need to change status quo, that we have the Parliament of Uganda set a motion directing, uh, directing funds to be put more in developing renewable energy resources and reduction in funds that are put in developing oil and gas infrastructure. That is a change of status quo. And in the policy motion, we show you how and why, dear judge. My first speaker has already given you reason how. I'm here to give, a new, to give you reason why. Now, if you come in a debate that in a country that is faced with a rising cost of living, rise, rising temperatures, environmental degradation, and you come and tell us that with creating jobs that come out of a resource, dear judge, that you're creating a sustainable economy and employment, for starters, dear judge, oil and gas is a natural resource. What does that mean? That it is exhaustive. That time and again, a time will come and we'll no longer have oil deposits. Surely shall have exhausted them. The best example is the one of Kilembe Mines. Does it still function? It created very many jobs for people within the mid-1970s up to the 90s until there were no more copper deposits in Kasesi. And what happened? People lost jobs. In this debate, we need to understand all the sources of energy, dear judge. Which one gives us sustainable jobs? And even in that case, when you, well, which one gives us sustainable jobs, dear judge? You need to understand that renewable resources are there and there to stay. So we shall get energy from them for forever. So which jobs are sustainable? Pure what happens? I Someone can have a job right now, dear judge. And when the oil deposits are done, the job is done because there's no more oil. So there's no more job, dear judge. We nullify that. They come and tell us that, uh, that we are looking what we want to achieve as a country. We have to achieve things that are set in that way. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development itself carried out a study in 2017 up to now, and they realized that oil and gas contributes to 94% of carbon emissions, and only 1.4% comes from renewable energy, dear judge. This debate will run down to which source of energy gives us reliable energy, sustainable energy, is available and affordable, dear judge. Uganda has shifted to allowing use of electronic cars. The CEO of MTN, Miran Susan Malenge, uses Yo, a Nissan Aria. For a Nissan Aria to fully charge, it charges at 3,000, 4,000, and when it is fully charged, it can drive, okay, it can drive up from Kasese, from Kampala to Kasese, and you only refill while in Mbara. What does that mean? That when you involve, when you involve renewable energy resources, in a case of this, that is a, a source of hydroelectric power, that is running water, we develop our minds, we have affordable and sustainable energy that is there to last. In this debate, you need to understand that we do not end the development of oil and gas infrastructure. No. As government, we have to have foresight. We need to see what do we depend on. What, wha I what keeps our economy running, dear judge? Point of information. So, Honorable, you are saying oil is exhaustive. So, the question is, would you fail to sleep because you fear to dream? Point of information, dear judge. Oil is exhaustive, yes. We shall use it. You not. And what he's saying is even a non-issue, dear judge. Yes, oil is exhaustible. That is the issue. And when it is exhaustible, it means with, with no more oil deposits, there are no more jobs. Now, for a question of economic development that you're talking about, dear judge, you need to understand that has been stated over and over again is that the project of oil and gas is a project that is entirely for, funded by the foreigners, dear judge. The government does not have major capacity to develop oil and gas infrastructure. What does it mean? It has called foreign companies to bid and uh, develop, the, 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 develop the sector on its behalf. What does it mean? That these foreign uh, companies are the ones remunerating, dear judge. But what happens? We show you that government has the capacity to fund the uh, development of renewable energy sources. Why? You'd all know it is common knowledge that Remember is running out of business, and the Uganda Electricity Development Company Limited is coming into business to develop Uganda's sources of electricity. What does that mean? That government has the capacity to develop these new en uh, renewable energy sources. So by that, we create sustainable jobs and we create sustainable employment and have a sustainable economy. With that, I believe we win the debate. Good morning, the panel of judges, the two antagonistic sides. I am at Hermo in the second negator on the, under the resolution. The development of renewable energy resources should take precedence over expanding oil and gas infrastructure. Panel, this is not a policy debate, but we are looking at at uh, the comparison of expanding the oil and gas infrastructure and also the renewable energy resources. Well, I'll first like to ask, I'll start with the rebuttals. The team affirmative is saying that oil and gas, oil and gas is exhaustible, but should we fail to sleep because we fear to dream? That is one thing they should get, uh, answer. And how will we escape the crippling economy if we take precedence over the renewable energy resources than the oil and gas infrastructure? 
And what is the key issue Uganda is facing? Uganda is facing an issue of the crippling economy. How they should come on board and account for how much the renewable resources have uh, have supported the GDP or the national budget of Uganda for its long time that it has been there. And they're talking also about sustainability. Wait, information. I'll take you later. They're talking about uh, sustainability. Well, the sustainability they're talking about, why, uh, they should come and show us how the sustainability is in terms of the employment levels. And they should so also come and account of how much it has con the renewable energy resources have contributed. Information. To the, your pardon? There's an increase in cost of living, people and economy. Of course Does not. Carbon emission keep an economy? Of course not. According to the East African crude oil program, we are seeing that the magnitude of the expected investments are are estimated between fifteen and twenty US billion dollars in the period of three to five what years. Information? Not granted. We are taking precedence, but we're not neglecting the fact that the renewable resources should also be taken as the second or priority in Uganda. PI. And also PI. not granted. We are looking at the benefits of expanding the oil and gas infrastructure. According to the World Bank report of 2023, we are seeing that 45% of Ugandans honorable. are below the poverty line in Uganda. Let Your us take it honorable. in a way, not granted, let us take it in a way when we expand the oil and gas infrastructure, we are going to improve on the employment and uh, we're going to improve on the employment levels. And when they talk about the, when they talk about the oil and gas, which are being exhausted, but we are looking at the energy density which is high and reliable. We are looking at the oil and gas that Point is going to help many Ugandans, not granted. And also, on the point of renewable energy resources, we are look, they are saying that the oil and gas can be accessible, but we are also looking at the renewable resources that also are reliable on weather or climate that is not going to be sustainable for the employment of many Ugandans in the country as they have stated their, state, their parameters. We are also looking at Point the oil and gas. In this debate, do you neglect the effect of the oil and gas sector on climate change and its effect on the environment and the carbon emissions they are present from it? Exactly. That's what I was going on. The oil and gas, industry, the oil and gas sector or infrastructure is also part of the Uganda's greenhouse emission reduction targets, by which you are going to use pipelines that are going to be that are going to be used to reduce on the leaking and we are going to manage this is according to the Petroleum Authority of Uganda. We are also looking at you're also looking at the uh, many opportunities and primarily from the United Arab Emirates which have taken precedence over the oil and gas industry that have financially developed. We're also looking at the 73.8 trillion that Uganda has as a debt. What are we looking at? What is the urgent solution at hand? We're looking at the precedence of oil and gas infrastructure. Look at the ex example of March 2022 where the Uganda airport was at risk of being taken by China because due to the 200 US dollars in China Exim Bank loan that is still in its grace period. Let us look at the precedence over the expansion of the oil and gas infrastructure to restore the crippling economy of Uganda. And also when you look at the oil and gas sector liberation in Uganda on June 19, 2023 is now the largest contributor of Uganda's exports generating over 60%. Thank you. This is the High School Crossfire. We'll be back in a minute.